Hello again ladies and gentlemen, Chance here with another Dead by Daylight Survivor Guide for the one and only Leon S. Kennedy. Like the previous video I did for Jill Valentine, this video will be divided into two parts, with the first part going over Leon's statistics and cosmetics, while the second part will focus on what his perks are, how to use them, and also the synergy between different perks and build ideas. With that said, let's get right into the guide and hopefully help you and Leon survive your first day on a job in Raccoon City. In Dead by Daylight, Leon's height is listed as average among the male survivors in the game. Since the male survivors are taller than the female survivors, they tend to be weaker in the stealth category. For his speed rating, Leon's movement speed is the exact same as every other survivor in the game, with a default running speed of 4.0 meters per second. Since Leon's stats have him on the average side for movement speed, stealth, grunts, cries, and overall voice lines, he ends up being set up as one of the most average survivors in the game. As a final stat, he also is listed in the game with a difficulty rating of Intermediate. For the appearance and design of Leon in Dead by Daylight, the developers decided not to use his original look from the 1998 release of Resident Evil 2. They instead went with his more updated look from the 2019 release of Resident Evil 2 Remake. In his default cosmetic set, Leon is wearing his armored RPD uniform, which is predominantly dark blue and black with white sleeves. Due to the color scheme of the set, it actually works quite well for stealth on a variety of maps. However, if you want to improve his stealth on the visual side more, then his prestige set is a clear choice of the two. The blood added to the set helps cover up the white on Leon's arms and helps him blend into his surroundings more effectively. Though, if you want to just stand out and feel like ringing in the Christmas season Kennedy style, then his RPD themed Christmas sweater is the only choice for you. Now, for his very rare cosmetic set, that comes in the form of the Persistent Investigator set, which is based off Leon's look in the 2005 release of Resident Evil 4. This set has Leon wearing a black t-shirt, black jeans, and a brown jacket with white trim, which, depending on the map, can actually be a very solid choice for stealth evasion and staying hidden. And lastly, for Leon's legendary set, that comes in the form of the Chris Redfield set, which turns Leon S. Kennedy into Chris Redfield and also features a new voice for Chris. Even though he's really here to punch boulders and protect the Redfield lineage, the new voice that comes with Chris doesn't make him much louder than Leon, which thankfully keeps him on the average side for quietness. For Chris's design, it is based off his appearance in the original Resident Evil, that has him in his full stars gear which features his stars white undershirt with rolled up sleeves, dark cargo pants, and a tactical green vest. Thankfully for Chris, his vest color actually helps him hide easily on maps that have a lot of green grass and green bushes in them. Finally, the last bonus of using Chris is in his interactions with Nemesis. Like with how he is with Jill, Whenever Nemesis performs a locker pull or Mori on Chris, he says his iconic line of Bite the bullet. Jesus Christ. I can do this. When healing yourself or another survivor, grunts of pain and all noises related to the healing action are suppressed. Failed healing skill checks do not trigger a loud noise notification and only apply a regression penalty of 3, 2, or 1%. This perk unlocks in Leon's blood web at level 30 and excels at keeping you hidden and evading the killer while healing in many different scenarios. To increase the effectiveness of Bite the Bullet, you can pair it with these perks. Self-Care When pairing Bite the Bullet with Self-Care, you gain the ability to hide all your cries and grunts of pain whenever you decide. This is due to Self-Care acting as an unlimited self-heal and Bite the Bullet hiding all voice noise coming from you while you are healing. Due to how well these perks complement each other, it can make killers relying on the audio of your cries and grunts to track you end up getting confused and giving up searching for you altogether. Lucky Break with a Med Kit 
When you pair Bite the Bullet and Lucky Break together, you get one of the best setups to escape chases in the game, just so long as you got a medkit with you. The way this works is when you're first injured, Lucky Break will activate and hide all blood and scratch marks you would've left behind, making just direct line of sight and the audio of your grunts and cries as the only way to track you. With Lucky Break doing the first part, now this is where Bite the Bullet can take over. Once you break line of sight, start healing with your medkit so Bite the Bullet can hide all your grunts and cries, leaving you now very difficult to track. What then generally follows is the killer losing track of you and questioning his reality. Boon, Circle of Healing The synergy of Bite the Bullet and Circle of Healing together can be quite strong, though it can be very situational due to Circle of Healing being limited to where totems are located. The best way to get the most out of these two perks together is to lure the killer into chasing you into the area where you placed Circle of Healing prior. This is so you can start your self heal and hide from the killer. While you won't have the flexibility of self care or a med kit to heal at any location, you will instead receive a very quick unlimited self heal as long as you're near your boon totem. Finally, if you want to build with Bite the Bullet as a centerpiece, then I like to run Lucky Break, Botany Knowledge, and Circle of Healing, though you could always swap out Circle of Healing for self care. This build works by having Bite the Bullet and Lucky Break helping you disappear during chases, and Botany Knowledge and Circle of Healing help getting you back to full health in no time, which also works to preserve more uses for Lucky Break for the future. Flashbang Get out of my face! After repairing generators for a total of 70, 60, or 50%, Flashbang activates. Enter a locker while empty handed and press the ability button to craft a flash grenade. The Flashbang is left behind when escaping the trial. This perk unlocks in Leon's Bloodweb at level 35 and gives you the ability to create the Flashbang item that can be used to blind killers and save teammates. I will now briefly go over details on flashbangs and how to save teammates with them. Flashbangs work just like firecrackers with the range of flashbangs extended to the maximum distance of the edge of the killer's red stain and works at a rough angle of 180 degrees. In order to save a teammate with a flashbang, you first need to know that every killer has a pickup animation that takes 3 seconds to complete. The flashbang's fuse time on the instant you press the key is roughly 2 seconds. This means that you have to drop the flashbang 1 second into the killer's pickup animation in order to free your teammate. You can also use a visual cue of the killer switching their hand position to underneath your survivor in order to time when to drop the flashbang. The last signal you can use to time your flashbang drop is the audio noise the survivor makes when they are getting picked up. The versatility of flashbangs is great but takes some getting used to compared to flashlights in order to do general pickup animations, locker grabs, and CJ techs. Lastly, one big advantage flashbangs do have over flashlights is the ability to perform saves when the killer is facing the wall. Since your character always drops a flashbang slightly in front of you, this enables you to blind a killer right up against a wall just as long as you're doing the same thing. To increase the effectiveness of flashbang, you can pair it with these perks. Head on. When using flashbang and head on together, you simply get the result of two perks that are made for each other. This is due to flashbang needing a locker in order to be created and head on also needing a locker in order to be used. There's a variety of options in how you can use these two perks together, but the main one would be by using head on when the killer approaches a locker you are hiding in, then while they are stunned you leave a flashbang on the ground in front of them to blind them as you make your escape. Blast Mine Using flashbang and blast mine with each other can be a very fun pairing for you and something that can drive the killer crazy. This is because of both the chain blinding and individual option these two perks offer together. To activate both flashbang and blast mine, they require you to achieve a certain amount of progress on a repairing a generator first. Once they are both ready, you can go for the main chain blinding setup. To do this setup, you simply have to activate blast mine on a generator at the right time, then hide and wait for the killer to come over and kick it for the first blind. Then while he's blind, run over and quickly drop the flashbang in front of them to follow up for the second blind. Decisive Strike When you pair flashbang with decisive strike, you gain some added survivability in case the killer is really determined to finish you off as soon as possible. This is thanks to the stun potential of decisive strike and the blind potential of flashbang. To execute this pairing, you need to at least get enough progress repairing a generator first in order to create a flashbang. 
Once that's done, you would then need the killer to down you and then place you on a hook. Once you are unhooked, Decisive Strike will be enabled. You would then need to bait the killer again into chasing you for the down while the perk is active. Once the killer goes to pick you up from the ground or from a locker, you then need to make sure you hit your skill check for Decisive Strike, then drop the flashbang in front of the killer while they are stunned to complete the sequence. Which if done correctly, should either help you escape the chase and lose a killer, or at the very least buy you more time to find somewhere else safe to loop. For a build that's centered around Flashbang, I like to use one with the perks listed before in Head On, Glass Mine, and Decisive Strike. This build is for the purpose of annoying the hell out of the killer and helping you survive in some dire situations. If you want to execute this build in its full sequence, then you're going to need some luck and have to run a combination of gimmicks and mind games. You would first start by arming a generator with Glass Mine, then letting the killer down you near the generator so they're far more likely to kick it and get blinded. Once you get unhooked, hop into the locker to create your flashbang and then let the killer pull you out of the locker to activate your decisive strike. While the killer is stunned, hop back into the locker and get ready to use head on when the first stun wears off. Then you would drop your flashbang in front of them to finish the sequence. It's a sequence of events that won't happen every time, but when it does, it feels very rewarding and is simply very fun to do. Rookie Spirit Marvin Oh no Damn it I'll stop this lieutenant I promise while repairing generators, complete 5, 4, or 3 good or great skill checks to activate Rookie Spirit for the remainder of the trial. Once active, the auras of any regressing generators are revealed to you. This perk unlocks in Leon's Bloodweb at level 40, and is a fantastic information gathering perk to know what's going on throughout the trial. To increase the effectiveness of Rookie Spirit, you can pair it with these perks. Blast Mine The synergy for Rookie Spirit and Blast Mine together is very powerful. This is thanks to both the information Rookie Spirit reveals about which generators are being targeted by the killer, and Blast Mine working to slow down and annoy the killer from controlling generators. In a match, once Rookie Spirit is activated, you will now see the locations of generators that are regressing. With this information, you can now find a generator easily and more than likely give you an idea of where the killer is. Once you have that information, you can decide on which generator you would either like to slow down from the killer's control, or you can highlight a generator you want to prioritize via Blast Mine to hopefully signal your teammates over to your location. Repressed Alliance The pairing of Rookie Spirit and Repressed Alliance together is a very natural one. This is of course due to the information Rookie Spirit gives, and the power Repressed Alliance has to completely block generators from the killer for a set amount of time, and to also notify teammates of a generator's location and status. Like the pairing previously stated with Blast Mine, this pairing works in a very similar way, with the main difference being that Repressed Alliance is better at denying the killer the ability to damage generators for a much longer time, and is better if you plan to let a teammate take over a generator while you distract the killer. Prove Thyself The idea of pairing Rookie Spirit and Prove Thyself is purely built for working on generators with your teammates and being on the same page. If not, then you're better off using a different perk to pair with Rookie Spirit. With that said, if you do have teammates that work well with you, then having these two perks together can be great for speeding through generators. This is again due to Rookie Spirit giving you information that you can relay or signal to your teammates, and then use this information in figuring out which generators you want to tackle together with the power of Prove Thyself. The build I like to use with Rookie Spirit is actually with the three perks I listed previously in Blast Mine, Repress Alliance, and Prove Thyself, for the purpose of working with the team as much as possible and taking away generator control from the killer. While there are many different options, the way I like to use this build is in first selecting a generator I want to focus on via Rookie Spirit, then setting up Blast Mine on it and keeping a hiding place in mind for when the killer returns to check it. Once a killer kicks a generator, I would run up and block it with Repressed Alliance, and then I would either take chase while a teammate complete the generator, or get a teammate to help me complete it once it unblocks with Prove Thyself. And that wraps up this video guide for Leon S. Kennedy. Hopefully you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.